Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I am going to explain you stop and wait ARQ protocol. ARQ means automatic repeat request. And here I'll explain you stop and wait protocol with error free case. Why the reason is I want to derive some parameters which is there with stop and wait protocol that will help you to understand how to solve problems based on stop and wait protocol. So first of all, how flow control is happening. That is what the case which I want to explain you along with stop and wait ARQ protocol. So here for that, see here we are having one transmitter and one receiver and that is connected by this medium. Let us say this medium is having length D and here transmitter will send frames to receiver, right? So one by one frame will be forwarded to receiver, but how flow control happens? Let us try to understand that. So first of all, transmitter will be having variable zero and the receiver will be having variable zero. What it means? Transmitter will send frame number zero and the receiver is waiting for frame number zero. So let us forward one frame from transmitter towards receiver. So you see one frame that has been forwarded from transmitter to the receiver and that is frame number zero as per T is equals to zero means transmitter will forward frame zero and R is equals to zero means receiver is waiting for from or frame number zero. Now as soon as this frame number zero that has been received at receiver side this variable now it will change now it will become r is equals to 1 if this frame received successfully over here right now as this frame is received successfully receiver will give acknowledgement over here and in that acknowledgement it will be asking for frame number 1 so here i am saying acknowledgement a is equals to 1 that is given by receiver to transmitter it indicates now transmitter will have to send which frame frame number 1 so now this variable t now that will become t is equals to 1 and now it will forward next frame that is frame number 1. Once frame number 1 is received over here at receiver side it will change this variable to r is equals to 2 and now it will ask for next frame that is frame number 2 by acknowledgement. So here it will send acknowledgement a2. It indicates now transmitter will have to send frame number 2 and transmitter will send frame number 2 over here you see. So based on acknowledgement one by one frame will be forwarded by transmitter. See this is how simply stop and wait ARQ protocol that is function right. So let us see the basics of this after that I will explain you how to derive some interesting parameters of stop and wait ARQ protocol. So see in stop and wait ARQ protocol we are handling flow control and that has been happening at data link layer. Here flow control is done based on acknowledgement given by receiver to transmitter. So I have told you one frame will be forwarded by transmitter and next frame that will be requested by receiver to transmitter by acknowledgement. Right. If frame is received by receiver then acknowledgement gives information of received frame and next frame to the transmitter. So acknowledgement gives you idea about previous frame was received by receiver and what should be the next frame right. So that is how things are happening inside a stop and wait ARQ protocol. Now there is one very interesting parameter that we are dealing with to compute that is how much time requires for one frame propagation right. Let me note it down first. So if I say time required for one frame that is t right. So you see how much time is required. See this transmitter that needs transmission time period TT to place frame on the medium, right? I have already explained that in my previous video as well. You see transmission delay. So that is a delay which is therefore transmitter to place frames on the media. So whatever a time period that is required to place one frame on the medium, that is what transmission delay, right? So transmission delay is TT is equals to L by B, right? So let me mention that over here as well. TT transmission delay that is L by B where L is size of frame in bits and B is bandwidth that is there in terms of bits per second, right? So here transmitter that will be 
putting that uh, frame on the medium for that tt amount of time delay that is there and that frame now it is there on the medium now it will take some time to reach it at receiver side so that is propagation delay you see propagation delay that even i have explained in my last video that is a length of medium that is d divided by velocity of that signal inside medium right so d by v that is propagation delay let me mention that even so propagation delay tp that is length of the medium divided by velocity of signal in the medium so length of the medium that it is there in meter and velocity in terms of meter per second so propagation delay is d by v so now you see here propagation delay from from transmitter to receiver that is tp right now frame is reaching over here at receiver side so once frame reaches to receiver side receiver will have to see whether frame is received properly or not right so there will be some processing time so i am writing tpr as processing time which is required at receiver side after frame is received right so receiver will process on the frame so that is what processing time after processing time what receiver is doing over here receiver will forward acknowledgement over here right receiver will forward acknowledgement so for acknowledgement again receiver needs some time right so now t t a acknowledgement transmission time that is t t a that i am saying right and once acknowledgement is placed over here on the medium it will take some time to reach said transmitter so that is same as propagation delay for frame right so that will be tp now here you see this tp that is propagation delay that is depending on medium that will not change right that is constant it will be same for frame as well as acknowledgement but if you observe here tpr that is processing time of frame at receiver side and tta that is transmission of acknowledgement from receiver side right see frame transmission time that is tt but acknowledgement transmission time that is tta right that is how things are there now here there are few basics that you should know like you see if you observe the size of the size of time period here with processing time and acknowledgement time then that will be very very small this time period with processing and acknowledgement that will be very very small right now why it is very very small let us try to understand that see when it comes to processing time then once frame is received there are few things only which is there based on hardware and hardware based processing that will be very fast so this processing time that will be very fast as well as acknowledgement transmission time that is also very small why the reason is compared to frame compared to frame acknowledgement is very small in acknowledgement we don't send bunch of information right here only few things that we are sending like previous frame was received and next frame number should be this see small information will be there so transmission of acknowledgement and processing of frame that will be consuming very less time that's why usually we ignore this two time period when we do calculation right so here i can say this time required for one frame that will be t and that has to be transmission time of frame plus propagation time that is happening twice to so 2 tp right as this two time period those are very small now i am going to explain you how we can compute efficiency of this uh stop and rate stop and wait arq protocol so efficiency that is defined as useful time divided by total time efficiency that is useful time divided by total time now what is useful time see if you talk about transmission of signal then useful time that is a time required to place frame on the medium right useful time means what it is a time required to place frame on the medium that is transmission time so useful time that is tt 
so useful time that is tt divided by total time that is tt plus 2 tp right so this is efficiency now in many of the books you will be observing this is bit simplified one let me show you how that has been simplified in some books like if you divide this numerator and denominator by tt then you will be having 1 divided by 1 plus 2 into tp divided by tt and if you consider this as variable a then efficiency that is 1 divided by 1 plus twice a where a is tp divided by tt so this is the basic formula that you will be using it for solution of problems where how to compute tp propagation delay tp that is length of the medium divided by velocity of signal in the medium and how to compute transmission time tt that is length of the frame in terms of bits divided by bandwidth in terms of bps bandwidth of medium right now i am going to explain you one more interesting parameter that is throughput that is also referred as bandwidth utilization let me note it down after that i'll explain you how to compute it so throughput that is also referred as bandwidth utilization and that is also referred as effective bandwidth now what is the meaning of effective bandwidth effective bandwidth means here we are sending how many bits with respect to time so here see i have told you we are sending l bits in a frame we are sending how many bits l bits in a frame right so here throughput means effective bandwidth where we are sending l bits in a frame with respect to total time t now l bits with respect to total time how much total time that is there tt plus 2tp now further we can simplify this you see l is what l is transmission time into bandwidth l is transmission time into bandwidth just place it over here l is transmission time into bandwidth divided by tt plus 2tp and if you observe recently we have calculated efficiency that is tt divided by tt plus 2tp right so that is efficiency so i can say throughput that is efficiency into bandwidth right so this is how we can calculate throughput as well so majority of times you will be observing questions are coming based on calculation of throughput calculation of efficiency calculation of total time period for transmission of one frame so all those things that we can solve by using these formulas i hope you have understood this still if anything that you would like to share it with me note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video